Look at her, she's spitting nerdy. Look at her, she's spitting nerdy. Can't you see she's spitting nerdy? Look at her, she's spitting nerdy. Hello, everyone. Today I am feeling carby and chickeny. As in, I'm craving more carbs and chicken, which is weird because usually. You know, like I prefer to eat a higher fat diet. That's just what I prefer and I feel good. So usually I crave like higher fat foods. Like I want coconut or I want avocado or something like that. But no, right now I want carbs. So I'm making breakfast with some sweet potato. And usually when I crave meat, or at least since starting AIP, when I've gone to eat meat, my body has kind of like told me to eat red meat. That's just what I feel like eating. Usually, even though I don't really enjoy red meat, my body's just like, hey, have the red meat, not the chicken. But today, I want chicken. I don't know why, but I'm gonna make some chicken. So I found this sweet potato chicken popper recipe online. So that's what I'm making for breakfast right now. Cause it's gonna combine the two things that I want. I will link the recipe down in the description for any of you that want to make it too. Also, yes, I know my face looks particularly red today, like, skin tone not looking too great. It was also pretty darn dry before I put all my oils on it this morning, but, but my legs feel so much better. I was able to actually like run up the stairs this morning. Usually I have to like hobble kind of crookedly because it's hard to bend my knees. Today, I ran up those stairs and it felt good. Alrighty, my chicken poppers are in the oven. It's gonna be 20 minutes and I can eat breakfast. It's actually really late in the day already. It's like almost 4 p.m. Not sure how that happened, except for the fact that I slept 11 and a half hours last night. I got the best sleep of my life last night. Okay, at least the best sleep since starting to go through all of these health issues. If you saw my last video, you'll know that I got diagnosed with topical steroid withdrawal, which theoretically explains all of my different skin issues. Still taking the diagnosis with a grain of salt, but everything does kind of make sense for that diagnosis and one of the big symptoms of it is insomnia and just poor sleep and oh boy yes that has really been affecting me these last like three months i have barely gotten a handful of like complete night sleeps in the last three months and that's probably one of the most draining parts especially at the beginning i was just so itchy that i either couldn't fall asleep or i'd wake up itching but even though the itching has subsided a little bit i still get like weird insomnia like i just can't sleep i'm wired and just wide awake at night or i just wake up in the middle of the night it's been kind of sucky but last night I slept so well and it was amazing. I've been trying so many different kinds of things to help with sleep. I was trying a few different adaptogens. I started taking CBD. I'm about to share with you guys my like 30 day trial of CBD. And that actually like spoiler alert has been helping with my sleep a noticeable amount. But last night I kind of just threw everything at myself, including a very fun new thing and it worked like a charm. Either that or the fact that I really didn't get a good night's sleep the night before, so I was already really tired, but let me let me just tell you, tell you what I did. So I took my CBD, I did a castor oil pack, which I've been doing to help my body detox from the steroids. No, there's not a lot of science to support castor oil packs, but because I can't really sweat or do exercise or any of the other like main forms of detoxification that your body uses, trying alternative methods so i did that and those theoretically also make you super sleepy and then i was wearing my blue light blocking glasses all night i also decided to just like completely stop any sort of work or anything that required any like intense thought processes about two or three hours before i went to sleep and then i threw in something new that i am so so excited to be trying and it is this little nifty device right here now this little panel here is a red light slash near infrared light therapy device from the company juve the idea that red light and near infrared light could help do anything in your body may sound entirely crazy and i will explain that in a second but just quickly why i decided to start using this as i've told you guys before i'm working with christina rice she's a nutritional therapy practitioner and she has been very diligent in helping me look for 
different methods to help, you know, not only relieve my symptoms, but also treat the root cause of my skin issues. And one of the things she recommended looking into is red light therapy. Now, I had looked into red light therapy before and I knew a little bit about it. I knew that it was supposed to be really good for skin issues, but I had never done like a deep dive into the research or really looked at how it worked or anything. But I knew that, you know, people had had success with it. And so I was like, oh, why not at this point? I'm willing to try anything. I'm willing to try a coffee enema. And red light therapy sounds a lot more pleasant than a coffee enema. So I got my little juve panel here. Let me plug it in and show you what it looks like when it's on. I turned it on for the first time last night. Like last night was the first time I used it. And I almost blinded myself. It was great. Turn that bad boy on and hello? Go. Oh, okay. So as you can see, some of these lights are lit up and some of them are not. The ones that are lit up are red light and the ones that are not lit up are near infrared light. So they're actually projecting light just at a wavelength that is not visible to the human eye. So as you just saw, it has two different wavelengths of light. The first one is red, which is in the mid, I think 600 nanometer range. And then the second one is the near infrared, which is about the mid 800 nanometer range. And red light has actually been studied pretty extensively as a therapy for a lot of different things. Like this isn't, completely bogus woo woo doesn't have a lot of research like it actually does have quite a bit of research and so the things it has been shown to help with that are of the most interest to me are skin health and just skin rejuvenation it's also supposed to help a lot with sleep which i'm pretty sure it did last night because i passed out watching the great british baking show y'all speaking of which y'all did not tell me there was a new season of the great british baking show I am ashamed and saddened that no one informed me of this, but there's a new season and I passed out while watching it. It's my favorite thing ever. I don't know how I fell asleep, but I did. And then red light is also supposed to help with inflammation, which my body is super inflamed right now. So I'm hoping that using this regularly is gonna help with that. And then other benefits that other people might find interesting are that it helps with muscle recovery and exercise performance. It can help with joint pain. It can help with injuries and like scars and burns and other kind of more skin related things. It can also help with cognition and memory and learning, which is absolutely fascinating in my opinion. It has a ton of other studied benefits but those are just some of my favorite and I think some of the most relevant and again you might be thinking Marissa this sounds absolutely crazy like how does shining a red light on myself give me a ton of different health benefits? Well first of all a really good example of how light can affect you biologically is just how when you go out in the sun you get a tan. That's a very clear reaction of your body to the sunlight. It's not like you're literally burning yourself like you burn vegetables in an oven and that's why it changes color. Your body absorbs the wavelengths of light and your cells change in response and your skin color changes in response to that. So very clearly light can affect our bodies. But how the two wavelengths of light that are used in my little juve device affect your body is in my opinion so much more fascinating than how you get a tan. And if you understand a bit of biology, it's actually pretty clear how it could make a difference. If you haven't taken high school biology yet, this following explanation might not make a lot of sense. If it's been a while since you've taken high school biology and don't remember any of it, it also might not make a lot of sense. And I'm not about to go through like an entire unit of high school biology in this video, but the short of it is that it has to do with the cellular respiration process. So if you want to do a little refresher on cellular respiration, you know, go on Google, look up how it works, come back to this video so you can have a complete understanding, go for it. But in short, Cellular respiration is the process in the body that basically takes your food and converts it to energy. So your food gets broken down into glucose, glucose gets taken down, things get added to it, and it goes through this whole cycle that is an output of ATP. And ATP is the energy currency of cells. So it takes food, turns it into ATP, which is energy. So within the cellular respiration process, nitric oxide competes with oxygen in the production of ATP. So the more nitric oxide you have, basically the less efficient cellular respiration is. 
And this is where red light therapy comes into play. The photons that are in red and near infrared light excite electrons, which break the bonds in nitric oxide, allowing the hydrogen ions to bond more effectively. Therefore, it basically improves the efficiency of cellular respiration, allowing the cells to more effectively create ATP. So if nitric oxide and oxidative stress kind of weaken our cells and slow down the body's process of cellular respiration, red light comes in there and makes that less of an issue so that the cells can function at maximum capacity. And this is why red light has such a vast variety of applications and uses and benefits. It's because it's just affecting the cell's efficiency. It's not affecting like a specific system in the body or like a specific part of the body. It just, it makes your body function more efficiently. So anything that is tied to just how well your body functions is theoretically going to improve. And that's why a lot of the benefits really have to do with how well your body can heal. If your cells are functioning better, they're going to be able to heal faster. So it's gonna help your skin be better. It's gonna help your joints be better. It's gonna help with muscle recovery and exercise recovery. Like basically makes your body a lot more efficient. It's absolutely fascinating. So I am so excited to be using this. I'm gonna make this a regular part of my routine for a while and see how it goes. It's already helped me get like the best sleep of my life. So I cannot wait to keep using it. I will report back and tell you guys how it goes. If any of you have used red light therapy too, please give me any of your feedback because I'm really, really curious. And in the meantime, if any of you guys are interested in trying out red light therapy, I cannot recommend Juve as a brand enough. Like there's so many scammy products out there because you can't just use like red lights that have the full spectrum of red light. Like it has to be a very specific red light. And yes, it is expensive, but it's expensive for a very good reason because it's medical grade, because they do everything correctly and do it at the therapeutic ranges to make sure it's actually giving you the therapeutic benefits rather than just scamming you out of your money and just shining red lights on you. So if you wanna check it out, I'll leave a link in the description. And if you order through my link, you'll get a few extra goodies thrown in with your order. So definitely go check it out. And with that, my alarm just went off for my chicken poppers. So it's time to go eat breakfast. Oh yes, chicken poppers. Um, yes please. And thank you. This is gonna be delicious. Also, I managed to sneak some chicken liver in here. I used ground chicken that was like 20% chicken liver. So, you know, trying to get my organ meats in. A lot of you, when I first said that I wanted to eat more organ meats, were asking like if I found any recipes to share them. So I have found that the best way to incorporate liver is to have it ground into other ground meat and then cook with that and add other things to that so that you don't taste it. Oh, these are hot. Ow, ow, but very good. Oh yeah, this is definitely satisfying my carbiness and chickenness. And the avocado is giving me my nice dose of fat too that I know I would regret not having later. So most of today is gonna to be taken up finalizing a lot of work things. Today is Friday and on Monday, I plan on going on vacation. But so I told you guys, I told you guys a few videos ago that I was trying to plan a vacation and I was really excited about it. It was gonna be next week. And then my legs started swelling and my mom pointed out the fact that it's probably not the best idea to get on a long flight if your body's already super swollen. So what I've decided to do instead is do a little staycation. So I'm actually gonna be staying at my parents' house because my parents are about to go on vacation. Lucky them, but I will have the house to myself. So I'm gonna basically take the money that I would have spent on like a flight and a hotel and stuff and just put that into all of the fun healing health things that I can think of. So I'm gonna book like a massage and do acupuncture and try like a bunch of fun alternative therapies. Like I'm pretty stoked to try IV therapy and stuff like that. So today and this weekend, I basically need to wrap up all my work stuff because on my vacation, which is gonna be one week, I'm gonna try real hard to not do any work. I'll be posting one video, but I'm probably gonna like mostly stay off Instagram, not be responding to comments and DMs and stuff like that and just take a break do my own thing, live life a little, and have fun. So that means the next three days until Monday are gonna be jam-packed with work, but that's okay. If you guys have any suggestions for things that I should do health-wise on my little staycation, 
let me know. The swelling in my legs has gone down today. It's not completely gone, but it's like less than 50% of what it was. So I've decided to take advantage of the lack of swelling and go for just a little bit of a walk to get my body moving, just to get things, you know, flowing, help the detox process of all of the topical steroids and stuff like that. And also just wanted to get some fresh air because I like don't leave my house anymore because it hurts. But speaking of the topical steroids, I also realized that I spent the entire video, last video, telling you about my diagnosis and about my experience with that doctor, which was just, whew, still can't believe but it. I never really went through what topical steroid withdrawal actually is. So I wanted to take a second to like actually tell you about what I'm experiencing. I may have also gone on a walk just to see the sunset because how beautiful is this? You can't feel sick when you're looking at something as beautiful as this. No matter how long I live in San Diego, this is never going to get old. So I'm just gonna talk to you guys here as I watch the sunset over there and it'll be great. But basically, if you watched my last video, you'll know that I was diagnosed with topical steroid withdrawal. That is the cause of all of my skin issues. And as I said in the video, I realized I didn't explain what topical steroid withdrawal actually meant or what like it means for me moving forward. So I figured I should, you know, talk about that. Topical steroid withdrawal happens to some people who use topical steroids for longer than usually recommended. Um, as I've told you guys, I was using topical steroids for literally 10 years, kind of all over my body. And as with pretty much any drug, your body can grow a tolerance to it. And then when you stop using it, it goes through literal withdrawal symptoms. And so my body is literally withdrawing from basically a drug right now. As of right now, there is no known treatment, unfortunately. And for most people, it takes an average of about two years to start healing. Some people it takes four to five to six years. Some people are recovered in a few months. It kind of is dependent on how long you're using the steroids, the strength of the steroid, whether or not you use an oral steroid, etc. The doctor that I spoke with who diagnosed me guessed it would take me about three to four years to fully recover. And he also said that since it's only been about three months since I quit steroids, I'm in the honeymoon phase and it's gonna get worse. So even though my doctor's appointment was kind of a complete disaster, I am taking it as a personal challenge. I'm taking it as a challenge to recover in one year. This does raise the question of why I was using topical steroids in the first place. I did have a small amount of eczema as a kid. And what I thought was that I never used topical steroids and then I had some weird flare up in high school and that's when I started using topical steroids. But what I recently realized is that is not the case. I'm actually pretty sure I started using a very low dose topical steroid in middle school before I had my first big flare up. So that would have been to treat the eczema, and then since then, it's been topical steroid withdrawal. Now, eczema is an autoimmune flare-up of the skin, but the consensus within the topical steroid withdrawal community is that it is basically just a childhood issue that you should outgrow, and the reason it presents itself in adults is that it's actually topical steroid withdrawal, not eczema. So in theory, it's actually very rare to find adult cases of eczema. It's usually just because they were prescribed steroids as a kid and just keep having flare-ups because of that. Once I have a more comprehensive protocol for treatment in place, I will definitely share with you guys at least the big things, um, but for now, that is kind of the overview of topical steroid withdrawal, what I'm going through, why it's happening to me, and kind of my plan for how to heal my body. Okay, you know there's a bunch of tourists around when people start applauding the sunset. My mom was lovely and just made dinner for me and my dad. We're having some salmon. It's probably a little bit hard to see, but salmon with pesto. This is broccolini, some zucchini, and then just some mashed sweet potato. So I'm about to eat this while finishing the episode of the Great British Baking Show that I fell asleep during last night. And then once I'm done with that, I'm gonna do a little, do a little juvin, get some red light therapy in, and just have a nice little, little chill dinner evening. Oh my god, the pesto and the salmon. Best idea ever. Oh my god. I just remembered I wanted to put pesto on my veggies. I'm gonna go do that. Alrighty, the day is done. 
I am sleepy. It's time for me to get ready for bed. I'm gonna end the vlog here. If you have any questions about anything that I talked about today related to red light therapy, related to topical steroid withdrawal or anything else, let me know down in the comments below. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up because it really does support me and my channel and I really, really appreciate it. Please share this video with your friends, your family, your neighbors, anyone with a weird skin condition who might have topical steroid withdrawal. If you wanna see more videos from me all about health and fitness, you can check them out over here. Make sure you subscribe to see more videos from me. Hit the little notification bell so you get notified when I post new videos and I will see you very soon. Bye.